Hey everybody, and welcome back to uh, Bite Sized Media. It must be Thursday. We're watching Sherlock. Yes. The the new, uh, <laughs> sorry, not the new, the contemporary version of Sherlock. Obviously, we've been walking through this. We're in series three now. I believe this next one is episode two. Is it called the Sign of Three? The Sign of Three, which Sign I believe is a, the only thing I know about. It is it is a Sherlock. Uh, Conan Doyle Sherlock story but I don't know anything about it uh, this episode I remember as the last episode that I watched uh, back when it was airing 10 years ago oh god yes 10 years ago ironically I think oh 10 years ago I wasn't quite in the same situation as John is in is in as is in this episode there we go um, but you know it was definitely a different time in my life yeah, all of our lives. But I, I don't know anything about this episode. Uh, what, what I mean, do you, you don't know anything about any of the episodes. If I, oh. re- if I recall correctly, Sherlock solves a mystery like while giving a speech, but I don't remember like what. That sounds interesting. What that really entails? I know it was the time that the moment where I thought to myself. Wow, Stephen Moffat really thinks he's clever. I'm good with this now. Bye. That's I remember thinking that. Gotcha. And so far, the second episode of each series has been the weakest of each series. Like the first series was the Blind Banker, whereas the first and last episode of that series was yeah, but we were both mo- strong. That was kind of like the middle one-off episodic thing that sets up the third one. And then yeah, but now with Moriarty dead, like. Yeah. I'm not sure how you do that. Yeah, the, what's the the second episode of Series 2 oh, the is... Of Baskerville? Yep. That, and that was another one. It's like kind of a one-off episodic thing. doesn't really connect to the other two until like the last scene. Which again, sets up the third episode. Whereas this one, this one is uh, supposedly episodic, what I would guess, but I don't know. Do, do you remember it connecting to anything? Well, we like you said, Moriarty's de- dead, so it's like what? What? The only thing I remember that it connects to is John being married, and I remember not liking that because not liking the sort of separation of the two of them. I don't remember how that played out, but anyway, are you ready to watch? I don't know. Are you ready to watch it? I'm ready to watch. All right. Well, then let's. Take a bite. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, We just watched the second uh, episode of the third series of Sherlock, The Sign of Three, and boy, was I wrong. It's really good. It's, It's kind of annoyingly edited at times, but sometimes it really works. It's It's interesting. Yeah, the... It, uh, Jake made a pretty, pretty good, uh, a pretty good observation. About halfway through, it's around the time where uh, uh, Sherlock and John are on their their uh, pub crawl stag party, which only lasts two, two hours. <laughs> uh, he said, I, "This feels like a clip show," and I, I said aloud, well, "That's weird, because like, it's a it's a clip show of stuff we've never seen." And you're like, "But yeah, it's weird." I yeah. But and I remember sitting here, thinking like, I, I I like it, and I don't know how good it is compared to the rest. You know, the highs are pretty high, but as it all comes together, it started working. And once mm-hmm. it clicked, I was like, this is really good. And the way and it has probably the most sentimental, sweet ending to any of these episodes, where he actually shows his human side, but it still feels like him. And it's actually a pretty funny moment. It's like a sweet moment found, followed by a sweet and funny moment. Are you talking about them... Re- spoilers. Yeah, of course. Uh, are you talking about them referring to uh, the baby? Yeah, it's like it starts with him, you know, given that... You know, the, they're, he's playing that waltz he wrote for him. Then he goes and talks to... Mm-hmm. He actually says three, and I instantly go, oh, she's pregnant. Because that's what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then when he's talking to them, it's like, oh, neither of them know... 
And John's saying, how, how, how did you know? I'm a doctor. It's your day off. It's your day off. <laughs> I will say, when they started talking about a baby, I got... I know it's a fictional television show, but I got a little bit uh, concerned, I guess. Were you concerned it was like a she knows and didn't tell John thing? No, I got a concern because it's like she's been consuming alcohol. <laughs> oh. That's true, yeah. But... I don't know... Sounds like it didn't agree with her, so she wasn't drinking. Well, I, I I don't know how that all that plays I out. I'm agree. not a medical doctor. Nope. I'm not going to claim to be. I just, you know, you always read about, hear about, all that. Not supposed to drink while you're pregnant. Don't know at what stage or at what level that toxicity interferes with the development of the child. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, the but even before that, the episode has a lot of great character stuff just moments would, and interactions between them I would say that this is the pinnacle of them balancing the mystery ver- mystery side and the kind of what are these interpersonal relationships side yeah. there were a couple of parts of the episode that annoyed me uh, a lot I won't say a lot but this edit the editing of the show has always been kind of a crapshoot some of it works, some of it doesn't. I applaud them for trying things, but like the having the conversation with Minecraft <laughs> uh, while he moves through the glass and we transition back to where Minecraft is, but then immediately back to where the, like it just the, uh, it's too it's cool for like the first time. What it, and this is us, of course, not people in in the industry commenting on it, but I feel like the more effective way would be. It's just a classic, you know, cutting, you know, cross-cutting thing, cutting back and forth between them. And then you have that transition once, either at the start of the conversation where it reveals who he called. Like, you don't start with the shot going into Minecraft's uh, room there when he's on the treadmill. Or you have it at a pinnacle part of the conversation. Because then you have that, and then the uh, the little mini montage of the soldiers marching and... Uh, uh, Sherlock and John going there to to talk to the guard, like that was just choo, 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 and you're like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But then on the flip side of that is the editing of him trying to figure everything out with like the yeah. what I assume is like a courtroom because I know for, that's not Parliament for but some it could re- be a government for room. some reason when he's like on camera trying to figure it out, that quick editing works really yeah. well it's but, I think it, I, but I, it, could, that's because I think it yes that's because I think it replicates what is happening to the character um, in front of you like I don't think it would work as well if he was a slower thinker I think the reason it doesn't work in some of those other scenes is because they're slower like the, the conversation with Minecraft is slower it um and then you know the scene with them marching is it's slower you're meant to like see what's happening more whereas when he's thinking and they're doing all of that you're kind of seeing it the way he's seeing it yeah, i liked how whatever kind of room it is we're not british so we don't know you know it, it looks like a government building but i know it's not part of the parliament building for sure cuz that's set up in that, like that rectangular shape with the thing in the middle but it's like using that as like to be the inside of his mind, and like he's he's talking to all the women in there. But in the in the reality, he's like on different computers and phones, talking to them. And when he points, it's like he's it's just, diverting attention to you're that. Seeing it how he's seeing it. Yeah, and then like having what's her name from series was it series one or series two, the one woman that he actually liked oh, that the he thought woman. was dead. The woman. Yeah, it's like he sees her for a second. He's like, not now. Because it's like, yep, that's a perfect representation it's, it's of your mind getting distracted. Yeah. And then having Minecraft. Yeah, we if, you, if you're just tuning in, we, it's, we know it's Minecraft, but we've been calling it Minecraft. Definitely understand that it's Minecraft. Uh, like appearing up on the, up on the whatever you call that, where like a judge would it, sit. Or it's like an a interesting callback to the earlier part of the series where he asked for Minecraft's help. Yeah, but it's like that's like this pushing force to make him figure it out, and it's the cutting between everything in there and him in amongst the wedding guests as mm-hmm. he's figuring it out. He's like, figure it out, and, figure it out, and the, and cu- the wedding guests disappearing. Yeah. 
really good. It's and like you said, the the chaotic editing and the cool transitions work better when it's supposed to be chaotic, not when we're moving to a new location or we're just having a casual slower phone <laughs> conversation. <laughs> and then they did all that. Remember they were walking to something the, the ghost boyfriend thing. And they did all that, and then they did the slow wipe, and you're like, and now a wipe? Well, it was like, it it was the, that's that montage of the soldiers marching. Is it? Where it's, and then, I was like, no, no, why would you put that there? If you put that, just that, that makes sense. Or even like, if you weren't doing the thing with the, the different... You know, layers swooshing back and forth. Mm -hmm. If you just had, like, hard cutting back and forth between, like, the boots moving and the guards changing and them walking there. I think it And then have the... Sure. But it's like the weird... If they're trying something new, it feels like, but it's just not working. The the way I'm going to put it is a trap that I, as an editor, have gotten into. You start to do things because you can, not because it's effective. You questioned whether you you can do it, not whether you should, right? The Jurassic Park thing yeah. that everyone always brings up. It's true, though. It's like, look what I can do. It's like the Rolling Stones Back to Zero album. Hey, look, Mick, I can make computer sounds. Let's put it on the album. That album sucks. Sorry. Boop, beep, boop, beep, bop, bop. Yeah. Back to Zero. Boop, 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 boop. Zero, zero, zero. That is my, Back to Zero is probably my least favorite Rolling Stones song. I hate it. I hate that album. It has Harlem Shuffle, so I'll give it that. And it has the hidden track that's an ode to, uh, what's his name? I think it's Ian Stewart, who had died. Like, I think it's that album. That has nothing to do with this, but, again, you can do it. That doesn't mean you should. But it's not even, like, that bad here. Mostly, It's like, okay, it's talented people making this decision to try something different. I don't think it works in those situations, but then there are examples there are of, oh, when it is, does. Yeah. Sherlock continuing to kind of prove he is that ace icon of like he just doesn't connect to people in that way. So what's her name? The the maid maid I of honor. I don't know her actual name. She they said it. We can't remember because you know these episodes are ninety minutes long. Mm-hmm. But she said something to him like if you were this is like something about if you were like that. He goes I know. And I was like yep. And even at the end like he you can there's this little glimpse into him in that scene. Where uh, John and Mary are dancing after the whole baby conversation, and he look looks around. He's just out of place, and he sees her, who he's been kind of connecting with in the latter part of the episode. But then she's dancing with someone else, so it's kind of like this she's little glimpse with the dude who Sherlock said his girlfriend was going to leave him there alone. Yeah, yep. So it's like the second he sees that, it's like his mind quickly shifts gears to back to his normal self, and he walks out and does the coolest coat throw on. You can't. I can't do that. I want to see you try. Yeah, it, it it's it's always funny whenever I see whenever I see characters kind of like flip flip a switch and kind of change gears. It always reminds me of that scene in uh, the Star Trek TNG movie. Oh, which one is it? It's the one. It's the one where it's not the one where Data gets emotions. It's it's another one where he can turn them off, and he's like, "I'm feeling this new sensation." Data, what you're feeling is anxiety or something like that. I, I think you'd, I, I'm sure this is fascinating. You might want to switch it off. And he goes, noted. Weep. And he like flips his head and you hear a little Sheep. emotions off, sir. Data, sometimes I envy you. <laughs> and I was like, that's what I always think back to. Like, all he has to do is just do that and then he turns his emotions off. Oh, this, this, this episode is so funny, too. It's, it's funny because <laughs> people say the show really falls off after. The last episode I I like, but this one, this, this was, one was all the little character things, and like human moments from that first episode of series three that I like, but with a better better I, substance I underneath. If the it. reason it's so poorly reviewed is because it's such a tone change. It kind of is. Yeah, but I liked it. I liked the change. I didn't like it ten years ago. I like it now. I think this is. I, my I, favorite episode so far. I think they cut back and forth and did so many of those really random transitions in my youth when I was 27. Um, youth, wow, oh my gosh. Uh, when I was 27, I just 
it was kind of really before I was into really into making movies and stuff where it just was too much I didn't care for it I, I the what was the thing I came up with sometimes especially in the last episode and others if the show is a cake the frosting's really good but there's not the cake underneath isn't that great like all the all the, like the little the, the characters and the interactions and some of the jokes and the dialogue and like the idiosyncrasies of our main character are really fun but there's not much meat under there whereas this it felt like okay there's actual like a good foundation laid it takes a while to develop it which is fine but once y it clicks oh these three things are kind of all converging it works and all that stuff on top of it is just literally icing on the cake yeah one thing I do wonder too is because I've not seen anything past this um, I wonder how they're going to use Mary in the future because like we were talking about she kind of completes the trio she's the bridge between Sherlock and John because if Sherlock's the cold calculator John is the humane guy and mm -hmm. well, she like kinda, said, she's smarter than John in that way like Sherlock but she's also more human than Sherlock so she's kind of that bridge Yeah. well like I she, mean yeah. as made perfectly evident by that scene where she kind of sends them off together independently and it cuts to behind her and they're both giving her the thumbs up and she's and like looking at both, both of them yep. in opposite doors yep and I love the line he says about you're going to be the world's best parents because you've had plenty of practice but now you're <laughs> going to have a real baby to take care of I go, at least he's aware of himself um, I just got to say this, this episode hit home a lot for you didn't it <laughs> a we, lot we, well during the episode uh Jake and I have talked, and maybe we've pointed out in the past couple episodes, uh, there are a lot of similarities between me and Sherlock. No, I'm not a high-functioning sociopath, what sure? he says. I'm sure. And I'm not, I, I'm not the same person, but there's a lot of s social similarities. He's, they're sitting on a bench waiting for the guard to get done with the shift, <laughs> and he's talking about who ends up being important to the plot but he is like trying to make small talk with John where he's talking about his his ex commander and John's like wait why why are you talking about why are you interested in another human being and he goes i'm just chatting and i and i brought up to Jake here I was like i'm so bad at small talk <laughs> that when i start doing small talk with with you you will ask that question of like what why what because I'm usually <laughs> so deliberate in what I choose to talk about. We usually talk about things that are deeper than surface level. You know, it's not just acquaintances saying how's the weather, how's your job. It's so it's like when I ask about something not like that, you're like, what's up? I go nothing. I'm just talking, and you're like, hmm. So you're a little suspicious. Like what? Off here. It's like there has to be a deeper reason when it literally is no. I'm trying to connect to a fellow human. And, of course, are in the middle sure of that, John, human? yes, you are, <laughs> that, whether you like it or not. That and then, game, uh, oh, my gosh. At the end of the stag party when they go with back the, to What yeah, is that called? I don't, I don't I've know. I've played it before. I don't know, but it's so funny. <laughs> he I know. He can't be, he's like, I got it. It's you. <laughs> the thing is, that lady, how did she not, like, they're clearly drunk. I, I said to you, like, why wouldn't she just come back later? Why would she bring them there? Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's so funny. Like, they're clearly drunk. You think they're going to help you at all right it's now? So like, actually, funny, help you. though. Oh, man. And then we said he's like the perfect wedding planner. <laughs> like, perfect. It's so funny how good he is at that. But it, it, it's not surprising at all. Yeah, this this was so much fun. I, I get, it took about half the episode to, for to get going because it's like, oh, that one with the guard who was stabbed and didn't die but was stabbed. It's like they never solved it, and then that then the thing with the the ghost, the ghost dude or whatever. And then when it all comes together, it's like, oh, okay, this isn't just a clip show. It's literally like he's giving the longest and best worst speech ever. And when they all come together, it, I don't all, know, there it were quite a few in. moments of sentimentality. Yeah, within the yeah, it it starts very bad. He, I, I was talking to 
talking to Jake here, like, I get super bad secondhand embarrassment in movies and shows when characters have to give speeches and they're failing, or like a performance that's going bad. It, it's, it, oh. But then he reads the telegrams and it's really funny because he's having to read, let's say, like, Puppet and Oodles of Love and Squishy something, I don't know, stuff like that. And then, it, then it, it gets cute stuff. Ugh. And then it gets real like, oh boy, because he gets super bleak and cynical, and you're like, oh no. But then he turns it into, I am like the most cold, rude person, and this guy saved me. And I was like, okay. And then he turns it to something sweet, and then it just goes off the rails because he's stalling, so he can try to figure it out. I love how they have their code words. What is it? Vatican cameos. Yeah. And he, tell, he tells Greg, who can never get his name right, to lock the place down. And he's like, Vatican cameos. And it's like, and I love how what Mary... the se- Someone's about to die. And when he, I love the little thing of like, even though it's their wedding reception, John has to go help him and she's all on board. Like, not only all on board, she goes with him. I mean, like, if, if it's, I it's, want to say this as softly as I can. If you're a person's wife and you know how important those two are to each other I think it would be hard for that person's wife not to be supportive of them helping each other in that manner I like how it's one step further instead of her being okay with it or cheerleading it she's directly involved with it like she runs up the stairs after them and is there at the climax like I really like that she again she is the the bridge between them Mm mm-hmm is that all you want to say on it? I think that's all I got to say. The sign of three. I really like. So I re- I didn't like it when I saw it ten years ago. I like it now. I mean, it might be my favorite episode too. I don't know. I really love those Moriarty ones, but those might that might be nostalgia talking. Anyway, um, if you want to continue down this road, solving mysteries with us, Jared. Where can they find us? Oh, I gotta get the thing. You can follow us on. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, the funny TikTok, and X. Formerly known as Twitter. And you can listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and hey, if it's YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, ring our bell. Ooh. And uh, make sure you like us and follow us and rate us on all those apps and uh, uh, check out our Groovy website. All right. And if you want to see more of uh, Jared acting like Sherlock, and I guess, am I, does that make me your John Watson to your Sherlock? Yeah. Okay. okay. If you want to see uh, more... Uh, What's next week's episode? Oh, I don't actually know. His last vowel. Oh, it connects it to Yeah, because he said, this too. is my one and only vowel. Yep, so it's called His Last Vowel. It's the Interesting. Series 3 finale. You know, we're getting close close to it. We're in the second half of the whole show. Yeah. yeah. Didn't it feel weird? No, it feels about right. These are long episodes. It's fair. It's fair. Anyway, if you want to keep solving mysteries with us, come on back uh, here to Bite Size Media every Thursday. Until then, let's take a bite.